that is the feature that is no interdependencies and that is the problem which we need to fix and address that is critical but if you talk about a critical complex part there this particular scenario will be pretty challenging so you cannot even imagine complex part with general tolerancing so but a clearance bore gets larger and it can be further offset so there is no medium to restrict this and fix it the classical tool provides no means for managing feature faults the classical tool provides no meaning for researching and refining feature functionality because of that you cannot guarantee the fitment and function and assemblability also is a question and it will be in dilemma so another question is what about this particular holes the bore one really bore one so how can you say that the bore one is typically bore one because there is no fixed location with respect to which you do manufacture and you do the gauging and you do referenced so what about the bore three that bore three is a bore three and so on so is this a bottom of the part or is this the bottom of the part so is this the bottom of the part or this is the bottom of the part nobody knows we have controlled a symmetrical part in a asymmetric way this is the absolute symmetric part but you know the complete controls which we have done is in asymmetric way and the complete you know frustration and confusion for the manufacturing and the inspection people starts so as a result classical tolerancing leaves us the be holden to the tribal understanding means a wrong understanding and interpretation method but the gdnt if you compare the frustration and the power of gdnt just does the magical touch and gdnt frustration is the gdnt is complex this is a myth this is not truth just i am i will guarantee that mathematically i can explain you gdnt so gdnt is frustration and myth you can see most of the people they think that gdnt is complex gdnt is is basically boring gdnt is often used to decorate or paint your drawing rather than encode the function they are absolutely right because they think like that and gdnt is generally interpreted rather than decoded they are also right because they think and gdnt opportunities is like this the gdnt encourages fault tolerant design and can guarantee assemblability and function and gdnt reduces manufacturing cost through an ambiguous communication and loser tolerance so gdnt gives you a higher tolerance so that you can play around gdnt never only gives a loose tolerance and gdnt turns the 3d metrology inspection system absolutely reliable in the scientific process let us see if we can prove that so now the long awaited encoding process i'm starting the gdnt encoding process is something where the same example again i am referring in fact the earlier example was asymmetric let me intentionally do it asymmetric and do in a symmetrical way the six bore subs to mutually align and locate the six pins that everybody we agree the mutual orientation and location of the bores and their perpendicularity to the bottom of the block are critical and shall be held within 0.25 if it is not perpendicular to the bottom then it cannot be aligned so that may be 0.2 or maybe 0.25 but it is a tighter one but what about the location and alignment of the bore pattern this all pattern relative to the sides so this all we are keeping 2 mm so this is 2 mm so create a cat model and forget about this general tolerancing and most dimension will be basic and feature inventory after creating will be using our primary reference six planar surface and six bores those are the attribute we have so now the feature hierarchy we need to create that let us understand this just like the aircraft the rolling of this part now you can rotate this in this way or that way like that you can turn this around this and also you can turn in other direction also so three different directions are rotations are known as rolling yaw and pitch that means the most important feature must constrain the pitch and yaw if possible that means you need to restrict if you put this block over a horizontal surface plate the one translation is restricted and two rotation is restricted that is the yaw and pitch but still it can roll 
Roll means it can rotate across the plate. So that is rolling is not restricted. So how to do that? So next most important thing is to constrain the roll. So now by fixing another plane, that rolling will be as restricted. And again, the remaining degree of freedom will be restricted by the third plane. So how to do that? This is the encoding. The A is the bottom of the plate. This A, which we are seeing the bottom of the plate. And intentionally, I am giving a 2 by 2 chamfer here to show that a on symmetric part can be tolerance by GDNT in a symmetric way. And earlier we saw a symmetric part by post we tolerance in an on symmetric way. That is the biggest headache. So encode the feature hierarchy by leveling the datums like this and B and C. A restricts 3, B restricts 2. Just try to check this today once after going to your rooms and you will reveal that 3, 2 and 1 degree of freedom how it restricts. The most important feature A is the bottom of the patch which freezes or restricts pitch and yaw. And next B, it restricts rolling because after restricting this, it cannot rule again. And finally, the third one. So add a chamfer in order to prove that intentionally I'm doing a symmetric GDNT tolerancing with a non-symmetric part, asymmetric part. So that the inspection system also will be a challenging process. But here, in the inspection process will be a you know, enjoyable process. The tolerance and dimension feature now after completion will add the geometry controls. So here, this bottom part, we need to keep flat within 1 mm. And after that, the B part need to be perpendicular with respect to A. You can see the B is perpendicular with respect to A within 1 mm. And C, the third one need to be reference to A and B. It need to be get perpendicular with respect to the bottom part as well as this part. And that is also 1 mm. So after defining this, the CEO is this because this is the boss, it RS3 and this is the CFO just for a, you know, imaginary, you know, for some character I have introduced and CTO, you can say that this is a design engineer, this is a design engineer, uh, your manufacturing engineer or this inspection engineer or anything you can say. So this is not my intention is to just uh, dramatize this. So the tolerance and datum features to complete the first three link of the geometry control chain now we need to do so flatness is addressed perpendicularity is addressed and then we'll move to our basic dimension so tolerance remaining uh, planar part we have to go for the dimension like the 40 120 80 that we did the width we have addressed this particular part and here you can see for controlling the profile the across the rectangular block with the chamfer cut we have addressed it with respect to three different plane the control is being fixed here and here also so now the surface profile and two basic dimension we have fixed. And now let us talk about this intermediate dimensions where you can have so different six tools, typical location. And this is the diameter of the holes, 20 plus minus 0.2. So what happens if I'll go for this? So position of this hole is loser tolerance where I'm giving a 5 mm and I'm giving a secondary control for 0.5 for axis interpretation, axis wobbling, and this is basically the whole features movement, diameters movement, and this is axis movement, that is 20. So 20.2 is the overall diameter where 5 mm deviation is allowed, and this 0.5 is between the center to center. That means this is tighter. So in this way, you can instruct and encode the whole process